Hi, my name is Evgenia Nosek and I'm a PhD student in the University of Grenoble Alp. In today's talk, I'll present you how routing loops can be leveraged for DNS-based DDoS attacks. So just to recall, here we have a figure describing regular DNS resolution. Uh, we assume that all the resolver caches are empty. Uh, the client on the left initiates a DNS lookup for the A records of example.com. Uh, the recursive resolver receives the request and contacts authoritative name servers down to example.com. Uh, finally, 5678 returns the answer to the client. Uh, the problem here is that this is an idealistic and a simplified picture. In reality, DNS resolution process is prone to various manipulation. Uh, one example of manipulation is query interception. Uh, some networks may contain devices called middle boxes that intercept traffic and, uh, for example, forward it somewhere else uh, rather than intended destination. On the figure, the original request is uh, forwarded to an alternative resolver 5678. Uh, whether it responds correctly or not, it spoofs its own IP address and pretends to be 9, 10, 11, 12 when sending the response. The setup from the previous slide uh, can become dangerous if the middle box is located inside a routing loop. Uh, so here on the figure, we have the same client that asks a particular recursive resolver, which is 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, to look up the A records of example.com. Uh, once again, uh, the query is intercepted by the middle box and forwarded to alternative resolver, which is 5678. Uh, because of the routing loop, the middle box keeps receiving and forwarding the same request. As a consequence, the alternative resolver keeps sending spot responses to the client. Uh, how long it will last uh, depends on several things. Uh, the packet may be dropped early enough if there is any random packet loss or the router reboot. If not, the detail of the initial request will gradually count down to zero. Uh, in the worst case, if for some reason the TTL is not decreased, such a request loops infinitely. Again, as in the previous slide, the original query destination, which is 9, 10, 11, 12, is never reached. In our paper, if such destination IP triggered multiple responses, we call it an amplifier. So on this figure, 9, 10, 11, 12 is an amplifier. So the whole idea of this paper was to enumerate amplifiers and to understand whether middle boxes pose a serious threat when located inside routing loops. So to locate amplifiers, we made an open resolver scan that targeted all the routable IP4 addresses. At the day of the measurement, it was more than 3 billion of those. Uh, each scan target received an A request for a globally unique domain name under our control. Uh, we then capture traffic on our authoritative name server to see the requests and on the scanner itself to see the responses. So what we look for are identical responses that are returned two or more times. For the study, we define the response as a three tuple of source IP address, domain name, and DNS response code. If the tuple is observed multiple times, which we call packet amplification factor, we call it a repeating response. So the table here presents the results of the open resolver scan from October 2021. Uh, based on the previously mentioned packet amplification factor, uh, we divided repeating responses into three groups. Uh, the first group is uh, responses returned two to nine times and likely not caused by routing loops. Uh, the second and third groups are most likely to be caused by routing loops. Uh, then the responses from the second group would be caused by requests with decreasing TTL, while in the third group, the TTL was never decreased. Uh, essentially, in the third group, we have infinite amplifiers with uh, very high packet amplification factors. Uh, as seen in the last column, one of the requests resulted in 46 million responses. Uh, now that we assumed that there might be routing loops towards amplifiers from groups two and three, uh, we run trace route like measurements towards them. Uh, here we do not use the traditional trace route, but its enhanced version. And indeed, our results show that there are loops on the way to biggest amplifiers. Uh, what is interesting is that most of them involve destination autonomous systems, so could potentially be triggered from multiple locations. 
As we have been running open resolver scans since early 2020, uh, we additionally computed maximum packet amplification factors per scan. Uh, the figure on the left shows results in APV4, and please note here the logarithmic scale. Uh, during each scan, we saw at least tens of thousands, but often millions of repeating responses. As for amplifiers, uh, they were located in nine autonomous systems, meaning that most of those appeared during multiple scans. Uh, in IPv6 on the right, uh, we do not see much amplification. The highest packet amplification factor observed is only 60. Uh, but then there was one huge amplifier that returned 655 million responses uh, just to a single request. Uh, the amplifier IP belonged to a Philippine telecom operator. Uh, we have seen this autonomous system during multiple scans, uh, including the one from October 2021. In this particular case, uh, we were receiving surface responses. So, and at the end, individual packet size was relatively small. However, in general, different amplifiers uh, will return responses of different types and sizes. So today, we've seen that a single DNS request can result in millions of responses. Uh, we scanned the whole routable IPv4 space and found amplifiers across thousands of autonomous systems spread over 133 countries. Uh, we have also shown that there exist routing loops towards biggest amplifiers, and those are likely to be the root cause of this behavior. Uh, we also shared our findings with operators of 16 amplifier networks, and at the moment, none of those trigger repeats and responses anymore. Uh, otherwise, for more technical details, I invite you to check the paper. Uh, finally, uh, big thanks to all those who helped during this project, um, especially Baptiste for the discussion and uh, Kevin for the trace route source code. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them.